The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed, and is profitable for teaching, for free proof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Study to show thyself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. We are still in our faith rest drill. And as always, we need to make sure that we begin our service, make sure we're always filled with God the Holy Spirit. The mechanics, how do you do it? Simply name your sins to God the Father. It's very simple. And 1 John 1, 9 tells us all about that. It reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are many things that we do that we, that we don't know that are wrong that violate God's righteousness. That's why he is faithful also not only to forgive us our sins, but to clean us up from any kind of unrighteousness that we've committed. That's a very important part of rebound. So let's take just a few minutes and give each one of us the opportunity to rebound, to name our sins to God if necessary, and then I'll open with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to come worship you through the teaching of your word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit will give us the concentration we need to learn what you have for us. In Christ's name we pray this. Amen. Okay, we are still again in our faith rest drill, and this is an outline. We're actually getting toward the end of it. You all have seen this many, many times before. We are now talking about faith applications, which is our next to last point, a major point in this doctrine. And what we're learning in this section is how God the Holy Spirit takes what is human and turns it into something spiritual so that we can learn doctrine. You see, we cannot learn doctrine as human beings without the work and the power of God the Holy Spirit. And we have talked about under the topic of grace comprehension, how God the Holy Spirit takes our thinking, our, able to comp our ability to comprehend, and makes it possible to learn Bible doctrine, that is, spiritual phenomena. We are now looking at how God the Holy Spirit takes that doctrine that we understand and that we believe and circulates it through our thinking. In other words, the question we're answering here is, how does God the Holy Spirit take that doctrine that we understand and we believe, that's very important, and make it usable for us. How can we use the Bible doctrine that we are taught? And that's what we're talking about. Last week we talked about the frame of reference, and this is the first part. Now this diagram you see here says cardia, your heart. Well, a lot of times we think in terms of a heart as being this pumping thing that's in the middle of our chest. We Americans also think in terms of our hearts as being our seat of emotion where we feel good and feel bad. But the ancient Greeks, that's why we use the word cardia there, because that's the Greek word for heart. The ancient Greeks used the word heart as a place where your thinking circulates. So it's just the opposite of what we Americans think in terms of, of heart. It's not where you feel, it's where you think. So we're looking at your heart, where you think, or your stream of consciousness. And we're seeing how God the Holy Spirit moves doctrine through your heart, through your thinking, so that you can use it and apply doctrine and grow in grace. Some of this may get a little bit complicated, but I think it's very important to understand how God the Holy Spirit does this so you can be confident knowing that he is doing this whether you know it or not. Now we looked at Operation Z last week, or Grace Comprehension. And that showed us how God the Holy Spirit gives us the opportunity to understand doctrine and gives us the opportunity to, to believe doctrine. Now once you believe doctrine, this is what happens to it. First goes into your frame of reference. And we talked about that in quite a bit of detail last week. Now we're going to talk about the memory center. I think everyone knows what the memory is. We're going to talk about how God the Holy Spirit uses that. Now while the frame of reference is the area where you organize the doctrine you believe, the memory center is where you actually store your doctrine for further circulation and recall. How do you remember it? It goes into your memory center. See, doctrine is printed and organized in your frame of reference and then stored and then recalled from your memory center. 
Now here's an important principle, and this deals with your ability to remember doctrine, and this goes for anything. When you uh, young students are learning all your math tables, this also applies to that. Your rate of learning must always exceed your rate of forgetting. You see, we as human beings have a tendency to forget things that we don't have repeated to us over and over again. Doctrine is the same way. We all have a tendency to forget doctrine. We'll talk about why that is here in just a minute. Just like it is when you're trying to learn your math uh, your, your math tables or your spelling, ta your spelling words, it's easy to forget these things unless you use it all the time. Same with doctrine. The principle is that your rate of learning doctrine must always exceed your rate of forgetting doctrine. It means you want to remember more than you forget. When you are learning doctrine, whoever teaches you doctrine must repeat the doctrine over and over again, inculcating it as the word used. And this ensures a good print in your memory center. Repeat it and repeat it and repeat, and that way you won't forget it. When I was in the military, one of the things we had to do over and over again was to march up and down the tarmac and learn how to put our right foot in front of our left foot and learn how to march and learn how to do it the right way. And you'd think being taught to march once would be enough, wouldn't it? It's not. Over and over and over again so you don't forget. Matter of fact, now, 30 years later, if someone tells me forward march, I know how to march like I do in the military. Someone salutes at me, I know how to salute back the way they taught me in the military. Someone says left face, I can still do left face, and so on. I, when things are repeated, you don't forget it. Now, when you learn more doctrine than you forget, you increase the amount of doctrine in your frame of reference and in your memory center, and you grow up spiritually. It's very simple. The more you learn Bible doctrine, the less you're going to forget, and you're going to grow up spiritually. Simple as that. Well, guess what? Sometimes people forget doctrine. And what happens when you forget doctrine? If you forget more than you learn, that means you don't get exposed to doctrine that often, then the amount of doctrine in your, in your frame of reference and in your memory, if you don't have any doctrine in your memory, guess what? You're not going to have any doctrine to circulate through that, doc that diagram we just saw. And what happens? Instead of growing up spiritually, you go backwards. You see, you can look at spiritual growth as a mountain you're climbing, okay? And if you're not climbing up a mountain, what's going to happen? You're going to slide down again. Doctrine is the same way. Spiritual growth is the, same, is the same way. If you're not climbing, you're going to go backwards, slide down, step in some mud, and there you go. So you've got to learn, be learning doctrine all the time. Another important principle here is this. You cannot hear a doctrine just once and be expected to remember it and then to apply it when you need it. You notice that whenever, as you were a child, and some of you are still kids, that whenever your parents tell you to do something, you're told over and over and over again to do it. Why? Because you forget. You get distracted. Same thing with doctrine. You can't be expected to hear a doctrine once and then to remember and then be able to use it. Just like if someone were to hand me, say, an M16 rifle, which is what the military uses, at least they used to, and say, okay, Jim, this is how you do it. Cock it here, undo your safety here, pull this back, and shoot. You show me that once, I'm going to forget, and I'm going to be a, a dangerous person with that weapon. I've got to be shown over and over and over again how to do it and do it right. Now, why else do you need to have it repeated to you? Well, doctrines are multifaceted. That means they have many different sides and angles to them. You all going to be learning geometry here soon? Well, you're going to learn what a multifaceted thing is. There are many different faces to a doctrine, and doctrines are connected to each other, and they're built upon other doctrines. Just like building a fence. You have a doctrine that's a brick. You've got to have a brick that's connected to it and a brick under, bricks underneath it. Same way. The mind of Christ is very complex. After all, Jesus Christ created the universe. So you will not be able to gain the full concept of a given doctrine that you're being taught having been taught at once. In other words, also you see, when a pastor teaches you a doctrine, I don't teach the whole thing at once. Don't teach every facet of it, every side of it. There's just too much to teach you at one time. So that factor alone means that you need to be inculcated and taught the same doctrines over and over again. A lot of folks will hear the word, oh, we're teaching the faith rest drill. What? 38 lessons? But I heard this taught a long time ago. I don't need to hear it again. Well, there are many parts of the faith rest drill that I'm just learning myself. So I'm going to pass them on to you. You may have another pastor a few years from now who will say, we're going to teach the faith rest drill. And you may say, well, pff, I heard that doctrine about five.